Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Matthew chapter 16 verse 4, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, and Acts chapter 2 verse 6. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you Lord God for this word. Thank you for showing us the way. God help us to abide in you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, Matthew chapter 16, verse four, an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. All right. And so this is when the Pharisees were asking for a sign of of Christ's divinity, right? And basically they were trying to catch him in some sort of um, blasphemy or lie or something like that. And so um, it, it says an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign. So um, he, he is saying that, you know, um, they always need a sign. They need to see and not have faith, right? They need to see um, what it is that they are um, going to believe in. And then they say they're going to believe, but then they end up in adulterous situations, basically like the children of Israel where, you know, they had miraculous signs and wonders shown to them, and yet they still did not believe um, God. And so God works on a faith-based system, right? And it's, it's, you believe God. And, and that is the, the first part, first step, right? Um, You believe what God has presented. And so, um, we know that hope is the beginning part of faith, but um, faith is the key, right? By grace through faith um, that we are able to be saved. And so it says an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign. So they want to see something first, right? Show me. So, and then it says, but no sign will be given to it except so meaning that there are going to be no signs of, of Christ's divinity, of his return for them, right? Um, they can see the, the different um, prophetic things that are occurring, but because they don't really believe, they're not looking um, at the things that God has laid out for us, right? They're not watching for Christ. And so um, it they are, are in essence, um, unfaithful. They don't have faith. And so it says an evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So the sign of Jonah is debated, but when I was asking Holy Spirit, he was saying fish. So, um, what I would put together that the theories that people have talked about relating to the fish um, is that there was a great fish and it swallowed Jonah, right? And so um, this was like a graveyard for Jonah, right? He, he basically kind of died. So even though he wasn't physically dead in his body, he was in a watery grave, right? He was in a grave. And so for three days, he laid in that grave and then miraculously, he was brought back to life basically when he was spit up, right? Um, he was being held there for all that time, praying to God, and then he came out of it. And in the same way, Christ was in his tomb and he was in his grave for three days and he came back out on the third day. Somehow he was raised from the dead by by God, of course, not somehow. Um, he was raised by his father, God, from the from the grave. And so um that is what happened with Jonah. He was swallowed by a fish. And yeah, so um the thing is this can also um be um thought of as um when the rapture occurs, remember there will be graves that will be empty. Right. So and this is talking about the adulterous generation that seeks for a sign. So wanting to have some sort of sign that Christ is coming, you know, um, it talks about the fact that before this uh, verse, um, you know, when it's going to rain. 
right? So, and you know when it's going to storm and be hot. So why wouldn't you kind of know when Christ would come? Because the, all the signs are there. It's all laid out, right? But you want something miraculous and then you're going to say you're going to believe, but you you don't believe, right? So um, those who have faith to believe, believe anyway. And then these prophetic um, signs that occur, are, are just all icing on the cake. We know that Christ is coming. We can see it. We can look at the weather of the spirit and say that Christ is coming. And so, um, um, here it's saying, um, but no sign will be given it to it, that wicked and adulterous generation, except the sign of Jonah. So remember when Christ returns, um, there are going to be empty graves, Right. So just like um, with Christ coming out of the grave, that was an empty grave. When Jonah came out of the fish, that was emptying of the grave. Right. And so um, no sign will be given it except the sign of Jonah. And it says, so he left them and he and departed. And that is significant, too. Right. Because Christ is one with the Holy Spirit and with the Father. Right. And the, the fact that it says he left them and departed that that goes right along with it right in the conflation because if we're talking about the rapture remember the spirit is the party right and 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 this is is what is going to occur to the earth um the holy spirit is going to depart from the earth and and there won't be um anyone left to you know no holy spirit left um, in this earth. All right. And so there are going to be empty graves and that all of that works together as a sign of Jonah. All right. And so the second verse that the Lord gave me was Hebrews chapter four, verse 12, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit of joints and marrow and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So we've gone through this verse before, and um, it, it's basically saying that the word will divide, it, right? The word is going to reveal. The word is going to, to show us who is the faithful and who are not faithful, right? Because if the word gets down in you and you hear it, and you don't harden your heart, um, then it's going to cause the cutting away of some things, right? And and if you do harden your heart, you, you're not going to allow the cutting away to occur, right? And so Lord help us to allow the cutting away to occur because we want to be found abiding in him when he comes, right? Just like Holy Spirit gave that example um, a few conflations ago, where if if you've been walking somewhere and it's muddy, then you're going to have evidence on your shoes, right? You're going to have evidence of where you have been. And that's the same thing with the word of God, right? If you've been around a lot of the word of God and, and you allow it to keep pouring and you allow it to keep convicting and you'll allow it to keep coming in and you don't harden your heart, there's going to be evidences in your life, right? Of the cutting that has taken place. And so it says, for the word of God is living and active sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit. So it's going to differentiate for you the difference between your flesh and your spirit, the things that your flesh desires and how your spirit wants to walk in that perfection of Christ. Um, Also, uh, it says of joints and of marrow. Um, So meaning um, the division of, of where we bend, where we give, right, as well as our life source, where we get our, our um, drive, our motivation to move forward from, right? And then it says, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So if there are wrong motives in us, the word of God is going to reveal those things. So um, if you harden your heart, you're going to go in one direction right? And if you don't harden your heart and you allow Christ into your heart and you allow him to do that purging, then you're going to go in the other direction, right? And so um, the first direction was the first 
uh, scripture completion and evil and adulterous generation seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. So he left them and departed. And then the second um, division um, of where you would follow towards what path you would be on is Acts chapter two, verse six. And at the sound of the multitude came together and were bewildered because each one was hearing them speaking in his own language. All right. And so this is when the spirit came down, right? And the people were speaking in tongues, but the other people were hearing it in their own language. And so it says, at this sound, the multitude came together. And so this is a, a conflation um, a symbolism of rapture, right? Because we're talking about the spirit, the people, and a great movement. It says, and at the sound, the multitude came together, right? What are we? We're going to come together in the clouds. Um, and the spirit is going to be taken away from them. Just like here, the spirit came down and the multitude came together. All right. And so it says, and at this sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. There was oneness in mind, right? We were before the father because we had the spirit um, with us able to allow us to be in, in this glorified state, right? And so this is the second um, end result, just like one is going to have the end result of a, a sign of being left behind, empty graves, the sign of Jonah, the other one will have a sign of un unity and coming together and having one language um, and being gathered um, where the spirit is and where God is, right? All right, you guys, so let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Your word reveals us to ourselves, Lord God. Let it cut us, God. Help us to allow it to cut us, God. Cut me, God. Help me to see me. Help me to be on the right path, Lord Jesus. Let my end result be the great gathering together. Lord God, help me to have understanding and Help me to have wisdom in staying on the path and abiding in you, Lord God, every resisting area. Right now, I speak to you and I say you are gone. You are released from, away from me, evicted from me. I am open. I am not hardened in heart. I allow the Holy Spirit in me and I say thank you, Lord God. Pray this prayer with me. I allow you in Holy Spirit, have your way in every hardened place, in every overly determined, hard-headed spot in me. Lord God, have your way. I give you permission. I evoke it. I, I evict it. I, I send it away from me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Um, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to show you the way. Amen. All right, you guys, one of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, chew on your word and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So seek his face today. Amen. 
All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Oh, and make sure you go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God. Tell other people about Christ and go and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you in all those things. Amen. All right, you guys, be blessed.